to what? For what? What do we have to do with that? I think then the sacred uh, <coughs> change uh, its sense in the extent that there is there is now an infinity into the sacred. There is no longer that some special uh, force, <coughs> energy of a divinity is there or there and we have to to pay attention to it and to observe the ritual belonging to it. But I would say <coughs> this, the divinity itself become infinite. Become become what perhaps it has been all the time, but now reveals itself as infinite and no longer taken in the shape uh, under the name of a god, of that god, of the other, but a part of the question, uh, if, the, if the name of God, <coughs> or if a name like God has still to be used or not, is another question because uh, Maybe if we if we say only the sacred, this is not a name. It is a, or, or it is what we call a common name. It is not a proper name. It is not the name of a person. Uh, but this is a, 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 another another question. I will not uh, take it uh, for now. It is a question that uh, God. 
has been the name of somebody, the certain kind of somebody, the certain kind of person, of a personal, and then of a personal relationship. So, what is to do with the name of God is, a, is another question. But for now, I think we can say uh, the sacred is nothing else than the simple fact of the truth as I spoke yesterday about it, the truth as Aletheia, <coughs> the, the truth which is not the truth to be verified, but I would say the truth which we cannot verify, that we cannot make it true, but which makes itself true. It makes itself true, but not in the way to uh, <coughs> offer itself to any kind of verification. But it comes, presents itself, and I would say uh, it, can I say it glints? No, or it brille, brille, shine, shine, yes, it's a shine. It's a shine. Uh, yes, it shines. Hmm? Illuminates. Illuminate, yes. yes. We cannot illuminate. <laughs> now, for example, this morning when, when I, I came here and uh, I spoke about the don't remember what we uh, uh, the, the grass, the border of the wall was full of little, you, you tell me the name. Do, do, of the water, what we call in French, the rosé. I don't know why, why the rosé, that is the water which comes in uh, the morning, you know, which is not, not coming from the rain, but, but uh, it forms itself at the surface. You know. And no, this morning it was uh, uh, particularly, uh, I would say, is shining, yes, brilliant. Wonderful, all, all this was due of the grass. And so, something very simple and uh, natural. But, but, and we know that from, from the beginning of mankind. Uh, to what, to what can we relate? such a phenomenon, so a few, a very, very small phenomenon, to what if we don't enter the logic of the, the sun, the, 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 the warmth, the, 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 the difference of temperature, the formation of, the, of water, etc., etc., and how the water after that will evaporate again. Oh, we all know that. Uh, <coughs> That is the, the, the truth as it can be verified. I can measure and, and I can certainly there are people that, that know why you do uh, this side on a day, not this side, not this side <laughs> and not the, the very smaller size, etc. etc. How they, they do, so do, how they do to stay on the leaves you know, in, in, in a way they should. Uh, should uh, uh, form it, fall, yeah. and so etc. That or, or whatever you, you want, uh, the sun, the, the, the mountain, the snow, the, the. and 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 which is more complicated, and, uh, the transformation, even of the snow. Through the change of the 
climate and to all what our technique uh, makes to what was supposed to be natural. There is uh, something important to say. That is, uh, uh, I take an example is morning you uh, in the nature, but precisely uh, nature uh, is going away with the sacred. Nature has been until now something like a kind of temple. And nature has been of many, many religions place, not a general place, but a place where <coughs> in a tree, in a, this is what you are telling me, you know, what's a, so some people not having built a temple, but for some people the temple are one tree or one stone, mountain, um, a river, etc. And um, maybe for, for, for the, I think for the, the, the greatest part of mankind until the modern civilization, the nature was um, not, not a big temple, but may, maybe better a combination of temple and, and space between, between the temple of possible temple, this tree, another tree, this tree today, maybe another tree the day after, or this mountain for the, all, all the time, um, etc. But precisely, uh, we no longer have any nature, that, that is, we no longer have any order of things that would be totally independent of our presence and our techniques. Even, even the, the, all the trees, the grass, the do <laughs> everything we see here is everything in a certain extent is a produce, either a produce <coughs> of some techniques. This grass is nothing natural, but, uh, it comes from somewhere. Even if it is partly natural, the, 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 the naturality there is uh, from such a long time visited, uh, course with uh, some would say infested by, I don't know, by, by gas, by uh, changing of climate intervention of man by an end. All, all, so every, everything we are doing, all, all the houses build it here to change the soil, change the earth, etc., etc. Um, so we are no longer in a nature, and so there is no longer uh, the nature as a place where it could be possible to to separate some. Some place of space as being a temple. And if we do that in the sky, are we waiting for a jet to go through? <laughs> we don't want to have an auger made with a jet. And it can take a long time to have a jet. But at the, and at the same time, we know there are many less birds uh, in our country than there was, even 100 years before. <coughs> oh, what does that mean? Uh, I think if it doesn't simply mean that uh, the sacred is gone with nature, that the sacred nature is gone, then uh, it has to, to take a meaning or a sense we have to produce, we have to discover. And 
especially we have to discover how it is possible in a world where maybe no place can be designated as <coughs> already yeah. given by some precisely natural power or sur surnatural, but surnatural is, a, is another way of being natural. You know. uh, how can we open this world? Because we, we could say the, the fact that the whole world is a temple may as well have the meaning that the whole world is closed and is a temple but an empty temple. It's closed because uh, there is no other wall behind the wall, but inside the wall maybe there is no place for the opening of this truth which become itself the truth, but which becomes the truth only if I am able to open myself to it. <coughs> that is, I can't, I can't communicate with the sacred only if I open myself to it, that is, if I become myself in a certain way sacred. It is what we call, uh, in French, se consacrer. Who say that? Consacrer. Consacrer, in the, in the strong and old meaning, a, a priest is a, a, a man, is a people who consecrate himself or herself to, to what? To the, to the sacred. To the uh, devote yourself, mm -hmm. or devote yourself. Devote, yes, yes, yes. devote, and uh, devotion, devote is um, is to to make a uh, uh, yes, in, a bot in, in, in the meaning of a bird that is uh, something you um, <coughs> um, un segment. A vow. Hmm? a vow, a vow, a vow, comme un vœu. Comme un vœu, un vœu. You say a vow. Yes. Oh, okay. C'est le vœu. Donc, il vaut. Il vaut. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose de sacré? Mais faire un vœu, to, to make a vow, that is to to enter in a certain relation with a certain um, sacred um, event or configuration, you know, to be said. Uh, Make a bow when uh, the, the star in August of the this is twelve finant, you know, the star pass in the Himal at certain period in August. Um, you have to make a bow. This is a, a, a kind of of sacred behavior. Well, <coughs> the way of making. themselves <coughs> of people. The way has been for a very long time, in my time, has been what is called sacrifice. The sacrifice is uh, or has been the, the main way of establishing relation with the sacred. And it is well known that uh, the, the Western Mediterranean civilization started uh, with the end of human sacrifice. And uh, it is uh, something uh, remarkable that uh, around uh, something 
12 centuries, between 12 and, and 10 centuries before Christ. So, so there has been the end of human sacrifice in all the, the Middle Orient, you know, what's called the Ark, is the Ark. Morgan, this is the Ark. The Ark. Oh, Ark. <coughs> Yes, yeah. uh, it says the in the, of the Middle Orient is uh, <coughs> the place where the, the, the archaeologists uh, know that the human sacrifice disappeared slowly and <coughs> is replaced by, by the animal sacrifice and there is, as you know, uh, there is a double story about that which is like the, the double, um, the foundational story of uh, our civilization that is on one hand the story of Abraham, on the other hand the story of Iphigenia. You know, Abraham is the model of the sacrifice which does, the human sacrifice which doesn't take place. God replaced the last moment, he replaced the son Isaac by the uh, sheep. But, but Abraham uh, was, is justified because he, uh, <coughs> he was ready to, to do the command of God, which was to sacrifice <coughs> his own son. And besides, he's a son which was unexpected and which was, who, who was unexpected in a certain extent, who was impossible to do. Because Sarah said, oh, could I get uh, a son because I'm too old. So Abraham, which is uh, the grandfather, or the grand, grand, grandfather of uh, is sometimes called the Abrahamic religion. Abraham opened the story of those religions, that is a, the whole the complete uh, Western monotheism, with this end of human sacrifice. And Iphigenie, Iphigenie you know, is uh, the daughter of Agamemnon, which, with whom, <laughs> whom Agamemnon uh, wants to sacrifice because uh, the, the wind are not uh, good for his army to go to Troyan. And uh, the mother of Philly is terribly angry against her uh, husband <coughs> because he wants to sacrifice her daughter. And at the last moment, like Isaac, when Iphigenie is on the altar and the priest uh, sacrifice her, the goddess Diana, which Artemis in Greek, comes and change, like Isaac, they change Iphigenie for a um, mm. bish. Stag. Hmm? A stag? I don't know. The, le, le cerf, the, no, the cerf is a, and the beast is a female of the cerf. Oh, okay. The dough. The dough. The dough. The dough. The dough. Okay. So, this is very, very uh, strange and impressive that uh, in the, the double origin, the Jew and the Greek, Greek Jew, Jew Greek, as says Joyce, you know, extreme meat. Uh, the extreme meat. Uh, especially at the very beginning of our civilization, in this transformation of human sacrifice in uh, animal sacrifice, and animal sacrifice become as well vegetal sacrifice. And, and, and after that, there is a story of the, 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 as well the, the kinds of double story of the Greek human sacrifice 
of Socrates, of Socrates, which is like the foundation of philosophy, and the Christian human sacrifice of Christ, which is the foundation of Christian religion, and in both cases, the human sacrifice change totally this last uh, post sacrificial human sacrifice change totally the meaning of the sacrifice because in both cases Socrates and Christ they go through the supernatural life or the divine life you can't call it divine as well in Plato or Socrates. So what does that mean? That means that there is no longer a sacrifice or there is no longer a meaning of the sacrifice of life, of the human life. That is, that human life is, can no longer be sacrificed. And then what? What, what does it mean? I think that means that this life it's, is itself sacred. It's no longer to become sacred, to be made sacred. Because in the sacrifice, the human sacrifice, the, the, the sacrifice was not the, the abandonment or the rejection of the people who were sacrificed. It was the, the consecration of these people and through the consecration of one life, the whole people was uh, Consecrated, open to the sacred uh, realm or to the sacred life. And now, and I think that is a, maybe the, the, the deepest transformation of uh, our history. And the interesting thing is that uh, there is something close to that in the uh, transformation of Hinduism in Buddhism. So the deepest transformation of our civilization is this transformation of the sacrifice of human life in how to call that in the in consecration of the same life. Human human life is sacred. It becomes sacred without sacrifice. That means that it, it is no longer possible to sacrifice a life, at least to sacrifice it uh, by killing it and going through the blood from one realm to the other, from the profane to the uh, sacred one. But <coughs> But if every human life is sacred, and maybe every life, because we are, we are entering a, a civilization where even the animal life may, may be perceived as sacred, and uh, it's not by, by chance that we, we are, asking questions about the, the right to kill the animals, uh, that some of us are vegetarian, um, some, <coughs> some are not, those, but I think um, uh, at least among people like us, it is difficult not to be vegetarian and being a 
absolutely without any any question, any hesitation, any perplexity about at least the way of killing animals. So that there is something at stake there. It is not that easy to to say no the, the, because there is no if there is no longer a natural order, there is no longer the natural order that man is uh, uh, is made to eat uh, animals and maybe hunting is uh, something that belongs to, to another culture. The culture is with, with possibility of sacrifice. Maybe, maybe. Day to day, I think in a country like France, hunting has become such a poor thing because you, you have to, to, to take animal, uh, <coughs> you have to, to make animal going in very artificial <coughs> condition and to take them at the place of hunting, at the season of hunting. You know? and, uh, and I know a place where the, uh, once again, the birds like the pheasant or like the sanglier and uh, are taken uh, only for the sake of hunting mm. at a certain moment in the year. They are not absolutely not living in this in those places which are no longer natural place for for animal like that. So hunting become uh, comedy of hunting, an imitation of hunting, and uh, this maybe not no better uh, sign that hunting is no longer necessary to eat, and then remains only a certain parody of the sacrifice, which was at the same time uh, uh, implied in hunting. But, but at the same time, uh, it looks like something would be lost. That is the sacrifice human and animal. The sacrifice uh, was a way to open the, the way between this world and another world and the second world and then we, we are forced to say that we are in a world where we, we cannot say but there is still sacred we, we still understand and feel what sacred means and for example we understand and feel something by saying that human life is sacred and at the same time we have no sacrifice to go uh, from here to there that is from the profane to the sacred and in a certain way there is uh, in, in the way of place and of going from one to the other place there is no longer any sacred place and everything is profane. So there is a, a kind of contradiction. You say human life and eventually animal life is sacred, or the entire world is sacred, but there is no opening to the realm of sacred. There is no realm of sacred. Or how can, can it be or how would it be possible to not only to think of it but to enter a relationship to it. Once again I would say this, this is the, the, the new paradox where we are, we know what is it, we know uh, in a certain extent, we know where is it. 
we know that uh, we know that sacred is in life. In a certain extent, it is in life. And life, that means that we know that the origin of life, that is, that is uh, to a certain extent of the world itself. Of course, uh, there is, there has been a world before life, but life came into the world. And, uh, and the coming of life into the world, which is not the coming from something coming from elsewhere, but the transformation of matter itself in the living material, <coughs> which in a way is, 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 is not biology, now the physiology is something else, is a, is a, a sign that matter itself goes beyond itself. Life so, or living matter is nothing else than the matter, you know, nothing else than atom, particle, um, so combination of atom, molecule, etc. In a certain way, that makes life, that is, that is self-reproduction, self-conservation, and etc. So the, the simple fact that that happened, it, it, it is like the opening of the sacred into the world and through the world without any God. That is why I cannot, really, I cannot understand why some people are so, so strong to fight against evolutionism at all and to, uh, to stay to Film that God created the world and uh, of course, I could say of course God created the world all the time, <laughs> all the time. Mm. Uh, it means simply, uh, of course, to say God did create the, the world at one time and uh, on, on, in one second he created everything. So that <coughs> makes no sense. It's stupid, but. Uh, but to say that God created the world, say that the world itself, the simple uh, fact that the world is, is sacred or has something sacred. Why? Why? Simply because the world could not be there. Simply because the world is an absolute contingency. There is precisely if if it were a will, the will of some super being or super being to produce the world, first it would not be a creation, because a creation is not a production, a creation is coming out of nothing. And without a creator, if there is a creator. The, the, if you think of a creator, that is like a producer of the world, you have already presupposed the world itself, because the creator or producer are only in the world. But if you think of the creator of the world, then you have no creator. You think of the presence of the world. There is a, a wonderful sentence in Wittgenstein in the conference on ethics. Uh, Wittgenstein says, the creation, that is, that the world is there. 
And this is a very strong sentence. The world is there, that there is the world, and it could, it could be that there is no world, that there would be no world, and maybe the world will have an end. And after the end of the world, there is nothing else. The world or nothing. And uh, what is true from the world, the world is true for everything and every being. You could not be there. I could not be there. This could not be there. And the sacred is that is for us today maybe only the relation to this could be not. What is sacred is the contingency. There is no necessity. If there would be a necessity, then we would have to go back to the necessity to understand it and and we did that, you know. We did that. We 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 pay a, a lot of uh, attention, reflection, philosophy, theology, etc., to the necessity of the creation of the world uh, through God. And all the mythology and all the cosmogony and all the genesis uh, and all the theory of creation has been a way to explain why. But, but all those, uh, those forces to explain come all the time to, uh, in any case, all the time, to a kind of contingency because and this is very simple, and this is something you can find uh, by rereading all the story about creation in all the, the Greek philosophers from, from the scholastic until, until Leibniz included. And after Leibniz, it is to the end, it is finished. There is no longer any, any uh, story about creation in Kant, not by chance. And all those stories come to this dilemma. Either God was forced to create the world, uh -huh, and forced, open to question, forced by whom or by what? Then another God, a God, <laughs> a young God. And uh, uh, the, the, the theory of two gods, uh, and uh, one the good god and the second the bad god, the bad god who create the world as a bad world, uh, full of, uh, of error, mistake, etc., has been uh, the great theory in the Gnosis, in certain forms of the Gnosis. And it was precisely in, in attempt to divide God in two. Uh, the, 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 the bad God, responsible for the, what is bad in the world, and the good God, but this time the good God has nothing to do. And the bad God uh, was opposite to the good God. How was it possible that the good God uh, allows the possibility to the bad God to create the world, etc. So, either God is forced and Second, second uh, objection. If God is forced, then God is not free. If God is not free, he is not God. He is, uh, how say, tout puissant, all power, hmm? uh, uh, is limited, then is not all power, etc. So the second answer is, uh, is itself. Can itself be divided in two. Either God created the world 
by Lord, or for his own glory. But in both cases, what does that mean? What does it mean love? The God, love, the existence of uh, a lot of beings who are independent from him because if, if he loves them, it is not to, to create, which would not be created, to, which would be to produce, to fabricate, to <coughs> slay for him. And it is the same with the glory because the, the, the slave or the mechanism, the automat, cannot uh, celebrate the glory of their uh, master or sovereign. So to celebrate the glory, uh, you have to be free and you have to have, if not love, uh, some desire for this glory. No, the, the Quran, the Quran uh, says, says, God says in the Quran, I create the jinn, which has kind of angel, huh? I create the jinn and the man only to celebrate my own glory. And uh, what does that mean? That means that either, either this God is a, is a poor man who, who wants to be glorified. You know? So I have not enough glory, so I will have some, some people uh, celebrating my glory. This is so, so poor and so. No. Or, Oh, this is quite different, that is, my glory, my glory is what will uh, come back from the creation. And my glory is not my glory as the glory of the master or a sovereign. My glory is the glory of the, the world itself. And what is the glory? That is, the sense of shining, the shining in the... And what is the shining? in general, shining. The shining is what doesn't uh, belong to the property of something. Something can be the same, shining or not shining. But shining is, is, a, is, a shining, is a, the light or the illumination which come in addition to the presence of the thing. This shining or illumination has a name in our tradition, it is beauty. Beauty is the shining of the truth. This sentence, which is alternatively uh, attributed to Plato or to Plato, and which is literally in uh, no one of them, but it's very close to, to what uh, as well Plato has brought in uh, said. He says beauty, beauty is uh, in a way is a modern name, modern, modern, yes, modern since Plato. Yes. Or the Western name, two name, two names, the second shining. Or the shining as the addition to the, the to the simple presence of being in general. So I would say if if it is evident. That, that God uh, did not, cannot create the world by any kind of necessity, by force. Then, if we can only speak of love 
all glory, or love and glory, and maybe love and glory are going uh, together in a certain way. Then, it means that the pure existence of the world does not depend <coughs> from any kind of causality, from any kind of intention, because he, he, even, even the, 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 the will to have his own glory God cannot be an intention. If it is an intention, if it would be an intention, it would be submitted to a need. I need the glory, and once again, it would be, uh, I would be like, uh, I don't know, if I, I want to, to take uh, what is called decoration, I, I want to, to have the If, if I, I, I want something like that, <coughs> it is obvious that, uh, that I, I, I need it because I need something. If I need, I am in the, in the, um, in, in a certain kind of insufficiency. If God is God, if it makes sense to speak of God, if God is God, he doesn't need nothing. So, even the, the so represented will for glory is not, is not a will, <coughs> is not a desire, is not an intention. It is simply the fact that existence of the world is love and glory. And love and glory. Love and glory are both named for something which I said about glory, which is in additional to the simple being, which in a way is um, unuseful. <coughs> and sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's more uh, embarrassing or painful or, or full of problems, love and glory, than, uh, than useful. Uh, but this addition to the simple being is, is precisely what we can call sacred. And maybe every form of sacred, even in, in, the, in the other culture, every form of sacred did have to do with love and glory. Even if it has been all the time mixed with something else that is with with needs, with demands uh, to the God, to etc. But all the time there is something more. And uh, the something <coughs> more um, has to do with what we can call love and glory, that is uh, That, that is the shining of being out of any uh, kind of relationship to any kind of necessity, then as well of finality. And then, in a certain extent, we are alone to say that if our world is a world which in an open way shows itself 
as being without finality, as producing, as I said yesterday, producing more and more goals which all the time become means for other goals, etc. Anyway, this is, this is uh, the, the pure exposition of no finality. Our world knows that it is going nowhere, that it, it is not useful for nothing, uh, and that the whole world, uh, starting from with the life, with human life, but uh, and going back to all the life and through the life to the, 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 the very and pure fact of the existence of the world comes from nothing and is going to nothing. But that is precisely the, the form, the shape, the value that takes for us the sacred. That, that is the meaning uh, the, of the fact that the entire world becomes sacred, becomes the temple, the place of the sacred, because the entire world is the place for this shining, the pure shining, which is the shining of, of nothing, it is the glory of nothing, the glory of being, and the love of nothing, the love of being itself. But this is, this is certainly precisely what is the most difficult to understand because we, uh, we want also, in a certain way, we need, precisely, we psychologically, affectively, <coughs> we need to have some causality, some necessity. We want to have some explanation. And it is very uh, too hard to hear that we are here for nothing. But, but <coughs> despite of, of this need, this want, this, this uh, expectation in us of some causality, explanation, of some reason, despite of that, we know something about this pure shining and this sacred dimension of the existence itself and, we, and the testimony that we know something about that is precisely in art. Mm. All what I, I said yesterday about art and the mystery of art as taking place with the simple fact of tracing a line opening a space, uh, forming a form, forming or, or in a more subtle way, letting a form forming itself. Uh, this simple fact, uh, and the fact that this belongs to mankind from the very beginning of mankind, that is the testimony of our sense of sacred. And this is certainly why uh, art, as I said yesterday, why art uh, was all the time linked to religion and to all, all the forms of sacred. And it is a reason for what? Maybe today, today where there is almost no longer any possibility apart from, from certain, uh, certain 
communities but no longer for a long time as such. So there is no possibility of uh, linking uh, art to religion. Then we, we have on one hand uh, the enormous um, trouble about art. What is art? That started, uh, to say, around Duchamp, if you want, maybe a little before, with this big transformation of old art uh, already at the end of the 19th century. Uh, but we are still now, you know, we, if there is something with art today, that is the, the complaint, <coughs> either, either <coughs> renewed complaint, there is no art. Is that art? No, it's impossible. No. You call that art? Oh, thank you. Um, I can't do that every morning. No, all, all the, this discourse, the discourse of the in, comprehensibility of uh, contemporary art. You know, we started with Picasso. Picasso, it's mm -hmm. already old, no? But you have still people uh, facing the Picasso. So what does that mean? What is that? Uh, I can't understand. And there mm -hmm. is something there. There is something uh, uh, at stake. That is the difficulty not only for the majority of people to understand contemporary art, but, but the difficulty for the art itself and for the artists themselves to know what is art and how uh, they have to practice art today. This difficulty. Uh, is uh, as well a testimony of the fact that we don't know how to grasp the sacrality of a world uh, which is out of all the traditional form of sacrality. But I would say it is normal. This is, this is an enormous change, uh, enormous, but maybe not bigger than the change. Think of that: the change who has been, which has been the change of the Greek culture for the first time in the Greek culture, and uh, the mimesis, that is, the art as an imitation of the human uh, body and shape. You have that nowhere in no other art in the world. N nowhere you have the imitation of the human shape as it is in the normal eye, the normal form. But all the all the other form of arts represented human body with uh, I don't know, some, some, some disformation uh, that didn't pay attention to the imitation. What happened there? When, for the first time, the imitation of man become the way of art. In a certain way, we are still there. But you, you, you have to think at the enormity of the change when the gods themselves no longer have the head of animals. Things that, no, no, not so long before the Greek, the Egyptian gods had the head of a chacal, Anubis, of a crocodile, of a hippopotamus. And it was precisely the divinity uh, was present by the by the combination of animal and, and, and human uh, body. Suddenly, the gods become like man. I, I, I think we, 
we, we, we cannot, we cannot represent ourselves what happens there because it happened in a long time, not long, but yes, long time. And, um, and now we, we, we only know uh, the mimesis as having been the criterion of art. And precisely now it is finished. I think that what started with the, what's called the abstract art, which is a, a terrible <laughs> name, nevertheless, uh, that is a non-figurative art, which is more, more uh, so better as a naming. The non-figurative art is an art but far away from the mimesis. And I, I would argue that the abstract art has been the opening of a, a new space, uh, or a, a new space, but a, a, new, a new feeling for the sacred. I stop with yes. Um, can you link this change in art to the end of human sacrifice? Yes, of course, of course, because human sacrifice uh, presuppose that the that a human being, the, the, the presence of a human being with a, his uh, shape. Humanity was not something you have to, to observe as such, but was uh, or had value as a living being. Uh, you can kill him or her, and through the life coming out, that is the blood, the, the blood was. The, the element through so which the, the, the communication with the sacred was given. When the human sacrifice is finished, why? It is another question. Why? I don't know. The, 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 the end of the human sacrifice is, 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 is as well an enormous event, and like maybe all the enormous events in history without, uh, without visible causality. But when the sacrifice is finished, then besides it, it's time the human uh, shape may become the shape for God, that is for the sacred. In between, in between of course, there are the, the, the very different things, especially the Egypt, because the, Egypt, the Egyptian religion is at the same time the religion where the animal, that is the, the, the life in, in uh, its strangeness to us, is still represents the divinity, but there is no human sacrifice. On the contrary, uh, Egyptian religion, as it is well known, is the first religion to uh, pay such an attention to the life on the other side of the river, because it is already a river like for the grid, you know, uh, which, which is uh, not, not a fact um, or not the case in other religion. I think uh, maybe uh, we could say that there are, there are in the Humanity, the religion where the dead are still there. They are all around there. And maybe it is also the greatest part of the religion. The dead are there and we have to pray them uh, to and they are the first the first sacred presence to, to be addressed. Then it is uh, the, uh, the religion where the dead are somewhere else, on the other side of, uh, for the Egyptian, the Greek, 
So this is the other side of uh, the river. And on this other side, the dead have a, a strange way of living, but they are still living, but living as shadows. And uh, it's, not, it's not a very interesting life. <laughs> and then, we are at the dead at the end, the end of life. And the other life, which is no longer alive here, not even in another place, but the other life is the life um, in the spirit. Well, if, I, if I take the, the, the monotheistic uh, meaning in, in its essence, <coughs> I would say the resurrection precisely doesn't mean another uh, life, but the life itself changing its own sign. 